Okay, so what we're trying to do here today is work out where true south is versus magnetic south. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the alignment of uh, the transit of the sun across the meridian as our tool to be able to work out where that line is. Now, what we're going to do is there's two, two methods of doing this and we're going to compare the accuracy. Uh, we're going to take uh, a compass reading, um, a measure magnetic north, and then we know by looking this up on the internet that the magnetic deviation um, here in Melbourne is 11 degrees. I'm going to see if that still holds true. And then what we're going to do as our alternative is use the transit of the sun across the meridian um, uh, with a string line and a plumb bob and we're going to be able to make that line. So what we're going to do now is down here we've got our compass. Now I'm not doing it on the mount um, because the mount is made of steel and it's going to set off the uh, um, the, the compass and we're just going to stuff up the readings. So what we're going to do is just using this centre point on uh, the middle of the pier where this this bolt runs through is where we're going to run through the line and you can I don't know because it's a bit bright you probably can't see but there's a laser line that we've set up on the ground and what we're going to do is draw a line as a reference point for um, the line for mag uh, the magnetic reading and then when the trans transit occurs uh, across the meridian, we're going to mark that line and that way we'll have an angle that we can use as a reference point um, to align the scope, okay? What you can see down here is a line that, uh, I've just actually gone over it again with a Sharpie, but there was a line that I marked when I first put this stuff in, when I did this, this same process. So that's actually the line uh, that I measured that is pointing to the South Celestial Pole, true south. So we'll use that as a reference later when we do this to see how, how far off we are uh, in reality. Okay, so what we're doing here is we've measured out true north, uh, well not true north, magnetic north and south by using the compass and we've marked out a line. And what we're what we're doing with this line is we're going to use this line to line up our plumb bob and we'll use this as a reference guide because this is running all the way as a straight line to the center of the pier and then what we'll do is we'll measure the the shadow of the string line um, off it and then we can measure the the angle okay so what we're trying to do here is determine where on our on our mount true south is that's because when we are trying to take astrophotos we want to minimize any rotation in the image what that comes from is we want to be only turning in the RA axis in order to ensure that we are just effectively moving only in one direction not having to correct for uh, altitude effectively as well which would then cause the image to rotate. What we're trying to do here is get it as precise as possible to the point in the sky in which all the stars appear to revolve around the south celestial pole. Now obviously for people in the northern hemisphere it's the north celestial pole um, but you know we're trying to deal with doing it in Australia because there's not that much reference material by comparison. So what we've done now is hook up our tripod. You can use the tripod from your scope. Run the plumb bob down. It's just above the ground. It's not touching the ground. And we're running it along that, um, uh, that line that we've done just so we've got a reference point. That line can be any arbitrary line that's running through the middle of the the scope. Our, our desire here is to find a spot 
um, where we can we can use as a reference to measure the angle difference and then use that same angle reference when we're physically closer to the scope. So it doesn't really matter, we're just trying to get something to line up off, but whatever this angle is that we are drawing, um, so we're gonna wait for the sun to come out a bit, but let's say that was the angle there, that's the angle that we're going to use to point the scope um, when it, uh, when we are lining it uh, for polar alignment. Now, we know that it's only 11 degrees, so I've actually marked out on the compass 11 degrees. Um, so it's a very small measure, but what we're doing is today, um, we are waiting for 1.06 p.m. Um, that is the time at which the sun is going to transit across the meridian. So it's precisely halfway through the day. So what we're looking to do is measure where the string, the line that the string makes uh, when, when the sun is slightly stronger and we should be able to draw that line coming off there in about four minutes time and hopefully the sun will go from outside of behind these clouds and we'll be able to draw that line and then we can compare to see how close that is to um, the magnetic deviation that's for Melbourne which is 11 degrees we'll see how that goes All right, so we are about 30 seconds away from the transit, exactly where half day is. So what we've got is our line here, which is the magnetic line. And here's the line from our plumb bob. So we are right now, can't see. <laughs> precisely 106 so this line here and my pencil is not sharp anymore this is the line that shows us where true south is so what I'm going to do is go put this on here Alright, can we get the Sharpie, Benny? Thank you. So, that is the line. So, what we're going to do is compare um, True North with, or true south, with uh, our magnetic reading. So if we line it up on our new line, right, and measure north-south off it, we should be getting near enough this line now is marked out at as close to 11 as I can get on this compass. So from there to there, true north-south is giving me 11 degrees. So that's reasonably accurate given that what we're, what we're trying to measure here. 11 degrees is running along that line.